Hello everybody, welcome to the second video of today. We're going to be focusing our attention now on the uh, the new side quest and as well as some of the other bits of content that have just dropped into game. And it should be a very standard month with nothing really kind of thrills and spills are overly exciting. But there are some interesting stuff and bits to mention. So if you don't know already, this is a type of a store-based month with a little bit of free choice. And first of all, you're probably wondering to yourself, right, okay, side quest, is that why we go first? And that is the case. So once you're in there, it opens up on a weekly based fashion, which you can see right here, and you will get two chapters as of this week, and then on subsequent weeks, it will then open up more quests. The further opening of the quests are like follows. On February the 16th, you'll see chapter two, quest one and two. On week three, which is February 23rd, you'll see chapter three, quest one, and week four will be March 2nd. That'll be chapter three, quest two. So it seems to be like a very kind of like quick process to get all these kind of chapters and all these quests out to you. And it just slows down at the latter point of the month, especially going into March. The quests do cost one energy per tile. That's one big downside for this. So you're probably going to yourself like, all oh, right, okay, so that's costing. In previous months, when it comes to side quests, it's not been anything of a cost of energy. For me, I'm all about trying to get this done as quickly as possible, in particular for videos like this where I'm like, okay, well, we're going to go and explore this as, as, as much as we can, as quickly as we can. It doesn't seem to be a ridiculous amount of paths, but still that's kind of the the annoying side of things. It's like You're like, all right, okay, I guess I've got to auto-fight some of this stuff, especially at lower end, and then we're going to be finishing the video with with like looking at Legendary and see how that is uh, from a difficulty standpoint, assessing it, having a look at nodes, maybe the week one, because in future videos I'll just be doing like week two or something. But yeah, a bit of a downside in that it does cost you energy, but here's the thing. If you want those bucks to get the rewards, then you can do that. And the great thing about this is if you do all of the difficulties... <coughs> Which you can do, by the way. You can do all of the difficulties and get all the rewards from them. And and that's great. Like, you get all the mojo bucks from doing... From chapter one of Heroic right the way to the end, chapter three. The same thing we do Legendary from the first chapter right the way through to the end. 3,000 mojo bu bucks on everything. And they said box. What's, what's a box? 3,000 mojo bucks. Bucks is what you get. You're probably also wondering, like, how do I see the volume that I have as well? well? If you click on the top when your resource summary, you can see right there under special events, all of them pop up in the various different types of totals that you have. I've already gone through a completion and I'm about to do the exploration of chapter one of the heroic difficulty. And in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit legendary. So you'll be able to see the totals of the, uh, the bucks that you have. And this then means as you go into the various different types of stores, you're able to uh, to choose what you want. I'll be doing some future content about like best buys from the, the Mojo Bucks store or the MTN store further down the line, especially as you get more bucks, can make those decisions of what to get. As a lot of things when it comes to heroic, there's not really kind of like anything to worry about for certain players. You're like, okay, well, I've got heroic. What do I do? You might just want to grab some little amounts of shards or kind of like pick and choose because at the end of the day, hey, you may be more focused on your five stars, six stars. Even those that are new to the game are focusing on their four stars. Whatever you can do, focus that on, on what you want to take home as opposed to listening to anybody else. If you want shards, go shards. If you want rank up materials, choose rank up materials on the bundles or spread out the cost. I've done a video on that on which I should have the link to in the description down below. Also, one of the other great things about the store is that when you go and buy stuff, it also has like a volume of how much you own. So it doesn't mean that you need to kind of click in the, the top and the resource summary. You can also just click the bundle that you want and then it says like how many you own. So that's a great thing. But anyway, that's the, it's a very kind of like simple straightforward event you go and do the side quest you get yourself some mojo bucks you then make a decision on the things you want to buy in the store that's actually a very straightforward month and um hopefully you know people followed that in any case let's finish off by doing a little bit of the legendary difficulty and also you know see how the enemy bosses are first of all starting off with the um superior iron man uh, quest and then we'll move on to the uh, the other one the uh Lovely little Hulkbuster one. So one thing about this month's quest is it has this uh, this one, this this node here. Well, I don't know if it's going to be on all the difficulties, but it's called Head Over Heels, which I don't know if this is a tie-in to Love as a Battle Realm. Still don't know if that's actually going to be a thing this month, which is going to be kind of weird. I mean, look, is it going to be like dropping on uh, Monday when it's uh, technically going to be the 14th of uh, February and it's going to be Valentine's Day. Who really knows? You kind of expect it to be more of a Wednesday thing, but it could tie into the day. 
But head over here is on lethal damage, trigger an indestructible buff remover, removal uh, by a heavy attack if the buff expires. Now, let's see how, when, you say, when it says lethal damage, does that mean lethal was being like the last hit that's going to kill them off? I don't know. I kind of feel like that's what that's going to mean. But let's have a look right here. Let's get it down to uh, right over to the very end. I can't remember this node in any case. There we go. Um, so then I'm going to go that and then that. So that's how that works. It's a thing. Um, Doctor Doom could be quite fun for this. And let's just see with Doctor Doom. We've got Cosmic Ghost Rider fight. Now, I kind of would expect if we kind of do like boom like that. And there we go. It's job, job's done. Man, I do like a Doctor Doom. And a nice Doom slap. And it makes everything all the best. And I think as well, because they have things like here, Head of Heroes and the Power of Love, it kind of pinpoints that maybe we won't be seeing Love as a Battle Ram. Uh, but uh, still, you know, there's still some fun things on there. Whenever the Defender triggers indestructible from Head of Heroes, they are passively stunned. <laughs> doom slap works a treat. But as well, you know, we've got um, Head Over Heels. The power of love is a curious thing. It's the, um, what, what is it called from? Back to the Future, that's it, Back to the Future. Right, now let's finish off Civil Warrior as quickly as possible. Because I want to get to that boss as same as that, quickly as possible. So we just need to, when we get right to the very end, just a little rotation in, if I can just get in like there, and Doom Slap, and done. Beautiful. Love that node. Okay, so Superior Iron Man has a unblockable combat deja vu. So you got to repeat. If you repeat the same kind of um, attacks over and over again, it becomes problematic. Do bear in mind it's a buff, not an effect. So you can uh, not nullify it. You can stagger it. So that could be a good way if you're having any problems. Rich get richer. You could with the fact it's a hashtag metal champion. Use Magneto, which I'm going to use in a second. We've also got all the other kind of fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to use um, just going to use Magneto to be honest. See how we um, do's and slaps. So I'll go parry and then I'll do prowess. And this could be like something where it's like, oh, maybe I should not do that then because of the unblockable. Maybe Doom would actually be a better option than this then. So that's uh, that's learning learning one's lesson there very, very quickly. I think Doom will be the better option then. Yeah, so you probably could have used uh, Magneto there, but I just kind of feel like it's it's easier just to kind of um, use something that does stagger because you're suppressing a lot more frequently. And also, when the buff goes and you've got an awakened version, it is, again, more kind of like easier to rotate around. And there we go. Just just a lot more easier with a champion that's able to stagger or suppress the unblockable, um, if anything. So any kind of mystic champion that has any kind of like a nullification is going to be a better option, I think, in that case. Right now, it's time for the Hulk Buster fight. There's bleed vulnerability on this champion. Every second, seven seconds, the next debuff activated on the defender is immediately purified. Each time this triggers, the defender gains 50% of a bar of power. It's kind of a weird combination. Like, don't overly bleed me, please. So you might want to, like, lower down the extent of bleeds that you do on the champion. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, but then there's, like, Fractured Guard, which is uh, attack gains permanent armor break debuff, reducing the armor rating. I don't know, I've just like, got myself a little bit of, um, I'm going to see like Nick Fury, just gonna, I'm going to tap into the bleed vulnerability, even though the Hulkbuster, as part of its abilities, already has something where he's uh, able to deal with situations of um, of reducing down bleed. In any case, like, let's just like see what happens, like, oh yeah, because I get like shock debuff on me, that's fun. So it might be a case I'll have to use, um, uh, what is he called, uh, Doctor Doom in a second, especially to deal with the, um, yeah, look at that. But you can see, like, the extent of, like, there is a lot of melting damage right there. So I think, like, a shock debuff, that's just the only problem. Um, champions that shrug off debuff effect is going to be very helpful. So probably something like Black Panther, if you, OG Black Panther, if you're looking to intercept Jabari Panther, which does bleeds as well, they're going to be great options. Crossbones can be helpful against this fight as well, but um, there's also Hulk, um, pff, Hulk bust. There's also, mm, to a degree, I would say Warlock. I mean, I've just put that back in here, but um, I suppose that's the problem. It's just like, well, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm very rarely gonna get my parry, but uh, at least when I do it, and at least when I kind of scale up some stuff right here, the champion will be affected in a second with um, uh, when he goes into his. Come on, throw it. That's it, come at me. So he will be affected when he goes into... Because I'm at the moment going to power control. 
And then the champion in the second is probably going to get um, something. He's going to get a little bit of regen in second. Yeah, so I've got to watch out for that. And every time you do a, de a, do a debuff, yes, then it's going to be problematic. So, yeah. Um, there we go. Boom. It's not too bad. I mean, I probably would have, in hindsight, used Doctor Doom because of the shock side of things. The shock damage is a bit too punchy, in my, in my opinion. Unless you've got a champion that shrugs off the... Yeah, just, just really that shrugs off. Shrug off champions or shock immune champions, I think. It's just better to deal with that. Even better if you've got like a stagger champion as well, because it just deals with that that re regen, deals with the armor, deal, but then you just got to deal with that shock damage, which is annoying. But there, that's been a side quest, and I'm trying to get this video out as quickly as possible, which is like quarter to eight p.m. UK time, so I need to get this out as quick as possible. And then on to another piece of content, and then most of the other stuff is out tomorrow. There's are a few things I need to cover, but in any case, that's Excuse me, be the video. God, hiccups. Just had some food as well. Check out some other content on screen right now, and I'll see you later on. Tatty buys.